really sure about this one, guys. Oh, we sure? So when you think about the kind of band that MGMT were and the era that they represented and the sort of um, other bands that came up alongside with them that may have sounded similar or had a similar vibe, you'd honestly think that they'd have just been left behind. They had all the makings to be one of those bands that would have a few hits, but then years later, time would maybe just forget them or people would only remember them for those couple of songs, which may be on a mainstream level that is the case with Time to Pretend and kids but they've really managed to outdo that expectation in a lot of ways by having such a dedicated beloved fan base that have stuck with them for years and to this day consider albums after that first album better like congratulations at this point is probably more beloved than that first album despite the fact that the first album had all the hits Managing then again to go viral with the song Little Dark Age years and years later, uh, which was a sleeper hit in itself. It wasn't particularly that big initially, but then of course, once TikTok came around and we've seen the way TikTok can make songs just suddenly have a massive resurgence once again, we saw it for MGMT with Little Dark Age, which is pretty cool. So overall, I think they've had a well respected career and have again cultivated such an audience that care so much about what they do however for me personally as much as i can appreciate all of that i as an individual haven't really cared that much about their music i think they have select you know excellent songs that really stand out that i still to this day think are fantastic but as albums uh, you know you've never really found me really really going head over heels for any mgmt album it's just individual songs for me so of course going into this album you'd probably think well he's the last person that would end up coming out of it loving it given the fact that he hasn't really liked that much of their stuff so far or has only liked them in small doses but even putting that all aside putting by my expectations aside putting aside what i might think of the band overall I've got to say, man, this album is lacking in a lot more character than you'd expect an MGMT album. Like, going into them, you're going to usually get something that's recognisable, something that's distinct, and something that's a little quirky, something that's a little unique, even if, you know, again, I might not be the biggest fan, which I keep saying. That isn't even apparent on this album. Like all of those distinct qualities that you'd usually get from an MGMT album are just really not there. It is very, very lacking in character. And you can say, well, they're going for something a little bit different, but in places, to be honest, there's not a huge amount different uh, to what they've done in the past. There are a few tracks that do, you know, remind me of those kind of neo psych days of what they've given us before but even with that in mind like yeah you can go for something different but stripping away all the character and all the distinct likable qualities was a choice coming out of this album each time i've just been feeling like so empty like i feel empty listening to it i'm just so like drained coming out of it particularly like the last three tracks which i will get onto in a bit more detail but like once those tracks are done i just feel like i'm staring at a wall just like having everything sucked out of me because they're just so dire to get through and i do not remember a time where mgmt ever made 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 me feel like that it does start off fine i guess i mean there's been a lot of love for the track mother nature which i have not really been the biggest fan of i think it's fine i think it starts a little flat to be honest with you but once you kind of get to that you know instrumental breakout towards the end or it's not really a breakout but it, it kind of flourishes a little bit more once you get towards the end of the track and it's a little bit more enjoyable it's a little nicer on the ears it does again feel like the album is a little bit more inspired in these moments and then of course you've got dancing in babylon too which has christine and the queens not the most glamorous or exciting feature i think you'll ever hear from christine and the queens but it adds a little bit more depth to the album it adds a bit more um of a of a nicer touch because the vocals again come together in a little bit more of an enjoyable way it's particularly compared to some of the other tracks where the vocals just are absolutely flat as hell to me but at least these two tracks offer a little bit more the sort of uh, billy joel feel to dancing in babylon is quite nice too and then of course you got that kind of like psych dance meld of instrumentation towards the end of the track with the i love you repetition thing that comes up 
That part's quite cool, I suppose. I'm sure you're sensing a lack of enthusiasm from me, even for the songs that I do like on this album, because the way I'm speaking and the way I'm describing them, I can feel it in myself, because even though these tracks are solid, like they're not moving me that much. So you're probably sat there watching and thinking, God damn, this guy really isn't into this album, is he? But that's the thing, the best this album gets is passable. It's fine, it's okay. They're not particularly hooky or memorable tracks that are going to stick out or even going to be remembered from my brain in the next couple of days, to be honest with you. Like, they're just so passable. They're so on the ears, in the moment, fine. But once they're over, I feel very little because they're just not that exciting at all. But even from there... God damn, it gets even worse. It gets even worse. Bubblegum Dog is just this droney-ass vocal crap thing that he's got going on here where he's like trolling out every single line and it just feels like everything is just going on for eternity. It reminds me a lot, of, honestly, of someone like Max DeMarco, who I'm not the biggest fan of either. So there you go. Max DeMarco's taking shots in this friggin' review as well. But that kind of vocal style, the drawly, kind of druggy, vibey approach that Mike DeMarco takes is very reminiscent here as well. And yeah, maybe I'm just not the kind of kind of chill guy that you come across at parties that listens to this, probably with a moustache too. I feel like that's the kind of guy that likes this. Not to hate on anybody who likes this, by the way, or the audience of the people that do enjoy this kind of music at all. I just feel like the kind of prototype dude that listens to this and recommends Mac DeMarco and probably offers some drugs at a party is the kind of guy that's going to come out of Bubblegum Dog and be like, Oh man, when you're high, this song is the best thing ever. You've got nothing changes. In my life, I don't know if I've ever heard a la 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 thing sung with the least amount of heart ever. Like the lack of emotion this dude puts into those la 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 la's is something to behold. We need to study this further because, oh my God, I've never heard anything quite like it. It's so friggin' dead. It should be so beautiful. It should be so uplifting when a, when a song hits that point of the la 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 la. Like, there's just nothing. I feel nothing hearing this. God damn. And the kind of like classic, you know, singer songwriter feel to this song that you may get from like the 70s. There's a bit of that 70s throwback I feel with this track. Um, I don't exactly have any particular comparisons, but with the kind of like plucky guitar and stuff, it just feels like they're going for that sound rather than it being like a neo psych sound. It just feels so like, 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 like faceless. Like if you listen to something from that era that had a similar sound, you know, you'd get so much more emotion, so much more passion coming through but not really with this. I mean, I did mention Billy Joel earlier, but even something further back than the 70s, like the Beatles, which may be a very obvious comparison to make, but when they have those kind of rich guitar-driven tracks, the vocals are always full of sunshine. They're just so uplifting. They're so memorable. They're so just vibrant in so many ways. And I feel like this track is kind of trying to go back for that laid back style coming from that 60s, 70s era. And it's just really falling flat. Now we have to mention the last three songs, which I've already said that I didn't like at the beginning, but I need to go into more detail of, you know, for the review's sake, even though I don't really want to have to do this, but my God, these three songs. Look, Loss of life, let me tell you, yeah, loss of life for sure. Life was lost for me. My life was taken away listening to these three. Oh my God, the soul was sucked right out of me. Oh Jesus Christ, these songs are so dead. Frady's song, are you kidding me? The most flat, lifeless song I, I can remember in a long time. I hate this shit, man. Just left me so empty listening to it. Good God. Uh, yes, I can sing to you every night, I think he says on the track. <laughs> no, thank you. No. Can't be dealing with that every single night. Oh my God, what is with this? The sort of like reverb on the track as well just sucks all the colour out of it. It's so washed out. It's so grey. Like I'm listening to this song, I don't have that thing that where you see colours 
uh, when you listen to music. Is it called anesthesia or something like that? I can't remember the exact name. Probably should have looked that up before saying that word. Anyway, you know what I'm talking about. But listening to this song, I'm pretty sure I blacked out and saw just nothing listening to it because it is just so dead. Like, it's so dead. It drags on for ages what it feels like too. Oh. I wish I was joking um, is a title track. That's not me saying I, w I wish I was joking about all these songs because I am not. Um, yeah, that is the title of the track. Just, again, really feels like the vocals are testing my will to live on this one, especially when it hits that point where he's like, here's the thing about drugs. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, why are you telling me on this? Why are you going into this? It's like, oh, the instrumentation's like also spacey and like it's got these goofy warbles as well. Oh, God. The repetition as well of I wish I was joking that he says over and over again is so bloody monotonous too. It's just a really, really tepid song that has some touches and flickers of like neo-psych sounds, but oh, it just doesn't do enough for me to keep me in vested at all and then the final track loss of life uh, yeah i mean again just really really uninspired to me i don't know what happens to these last three tracks because like i say i wasn't that keen on some of the others early on but there was a bit more to them there was a bit more meat on the bones with the instrumentation but this song doesn't really get going until like the final minute where you've got the instrumentation that kind of starts to get a bit whacked out in a really odd way but yeah it just comes a little too late it's a bit random as well that the song ends that way doesn't really feel like the track built up to that either yeah there's just so little for me to get out of this album man i just get so so drained listening to it there's just very little character the tracks meander in a really boring way they're basically like hookless like there's really little to catch on to or latch on to with these songs like melodies or like little vocal melodies choruses or anything like that it's just so void of any of that this is the thing as well it's not like i'm trying to say that all music needs to be like ear candy and i need to be injected with sugar at every moment for me to enjoy the song just in case anyone just jump in the comments trying to say that that isn't what i'm trying to say at all i just think if you need if you're going to do music like this and you're going to maybe slow things down strip things back d divert your sound from your previous albums that's fine, but you still need to be engaging. And there's just very little on this album that lures me in, you know? I'm just really waiting for the vocals to become engaging and they just never are. The instrumentation a lot of the time is a bit lackluster too. Yeah, just very unmemorable this. Although I probably won't forget how those last three songs made me feel anytime soon because that is a feeling that I don't think is going to go away. 4.5 out of 10. I can't completely bash this album for the fact that the first couple of songs are fine. But even that is not enough to save it for me. Um, yeah, I'm quite surprised that MGMT fans have been pretty receptive to this one. I was expecting people to be a bit like me, a bit surprised that a lot of the great qualities that were in their music before... Even to someone that isn't a massive fan, I could I could see the qualities, right? And yet, yeah, somehow the fans have been okay with this. So maybe I'm the crazy guy here, but yeah, I don't know, man. This kind of kind of sucked to me. It kind of sucked. So let me know your thoughts in the comments. If I'm totally wrong, if I'm you agree, whatever, right, wrong. If that's even a thing with music, it's just all opinion at the end of the day. Uh, but yeah, just a miss for me. Would have liked to have just been more engaged with what they were trying to go for. Just, I just wasn't. Tell me your thoughts, subscribe, check out my Patreon, support me over on there, like the video, share it around, hit me with a request to review at some point as well. Have a good day, goodbye.